Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Pod Comics webcast. I am your host, David. As I hope you heard in the mini-sode, uh, my guest is Dami Lee. As I said before, her comics can be found just about everywhere, but if you'd like to read some right now, go to hotcomics.biz. So without further ado, my conversation with Dami Lee in three, two, boop. Uh, I have here uh, Dami Lee, author of Aliens Don't Need to Be on Earth. <laughs> Uh, I'm halfway through it. I didn't quite finish it. Oh, it's kind of like a page turner. Like yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Let's get the word out on this. I'm oh. going to, I actually want to like redo that maybe. Uh, you you should do this. I think it's a funny idea. Mm-hmm. Maybe for a future web too. So that's one of the other things that I wanted to mention to you is that I think you are the artist I've seen in the most places. Um, really? Yeah, I think I first found your stuff when it was No Boyfriend Comics, and I saw it on Tapastic, and then read it. Yeah, it's actually No Girlfriend Comics, but... What did I, I say? You said No Boyfriend Comics. Ooh, whoops. Yeah, No Girlfriend <laughs> like, Comics. Yeah. Let's run over some of the names of your comics, because right now you do As Per Usual, mm-hmm. and you did uh, No Girlfriend Comics in the past. Yeah. Was there anything else that I missed? So the No Girlfriend comics I did with my friend, Brandon Sheffield, Mm -hmm. who is a game developer in Oakland. So we actually started making these comics like kind of by accident because it was like he had just broken up with his girlfriend and I only made the first comic to kind of like cheer him up. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, hey, like this is good. And um, I have like about 20 more of these if you want to like, working on these with me and I was like okay and then so like we finished that and like I posted it to reddit and then it was like really surprising like how well received it was over there because like usually when I post something on reddit it's just like why are you here just leave (laughs) and so I was like okay like this is a pretty good response and then Brandon was like I have like a bunch more of these like comic ideas if you want to like keep doing them with me I was like okay so we started another series called hot comics for cool people and our website is hotcomics.biz, which i came up with and <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing um so that's one thing we're working on right now and that's actually being syndicated on go comics oh wow and yeah it, it's i don't know like the audience there is kind of weird because i feel like it's mostly like old people who it, read it i think it is And, like, they don't really understand, like, the type of humor it is that we do. Mm -hmm. It's, like, a lot of, like, confused comments and, like, trash talking and, like, just actually, okay. I wait, I feel bad, like, saying this out loud, but, like, I would say that Go Comics is, like, maybe more, even more of, like, a hostile environment as, like, Reddit. Whoa. Yeah. But it's, like, old people. So, I don't know. And then it's really funny because the audience on Webtoon is so young. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, they're so also like they're, very confused just in a different way yeah I don't know it's hard to like figure them out but I think for the most part like they get it yeah and when they don't they don't reveal it they find something else to like about a comic I think mm-hmm. uh, I feel yeah. what's going on there is they're young English is not their first language but also mm-hmm. like we don't have necessarily the same culture as you know, right. like, and they don't have the same culture as each other because you might have like a person from, uh, say, like Iran talking to a person from Indonesia talking to a person in, I don't know, somewhere in North Europe, you know? And so there, there's not like there's an international culture. So they don't all yeah. have the same reference points. It was kind of uh, risky. Like, I did this comic about what kind of music tastes people have. And I made a reference to like, Aaron Carter's song, Aaron's Party, Mm -hmm. which is like a banger. And I think also like I knew that it might have been like too dated of a reference for them. Like some of these kids were probably born like when that song came out. So there are a bunch of these comments that were like, does anyone else like not know like any of these songs here? I think the average line cartoon reader was born in the year 2000. Yeah, which is horrifying. (laughs) Well, okay, now that I know that you're on Go Comics, this really is, this proves it to me. You're on Tapastic, you're on Webtoon, you're on BuzzFeed, you're on uh, Go Comics. 
what, what what's what's left at college humor have you done anything for them i haven't like i've pitched a few comics to them before but um yeah i would like to keep doing that actually i'm not even sure if i'm allowed to pitch to like any other um websites right now just because i work at the verge and there's like a thing in the contract where it was like we can't have you freelancing for like competitors okay which yeah so i can't um make comics for buzzfeed anymore which is really sad oh yeah. i didn't i didn't know so, that at all yeah um, my contract with them is up this month. So that'll be like this BuzzFeed comics is online uh, webtoon right now. Mm -hmm. And there's like my comic goes up there once a week, but it's going to end starting this month. Well, that's going to make a lot of people. I mean, but your, your comics are still on webtoon, so that's yeah. good. But yeah. after you, I feel like, um, what is it? Granola sometimes. Yeah. Is that Karina's comic? That's Karina. Yeah, it's, I think, she's really great. I think she should get her own webtoon. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea what webtoon is planning for the future because I think mm -hmm. perhaps webtoon doesn't know what webtoon's planning for the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, she would be an excellent candidate for having her own series there. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny what you say about Go Comics because I, I think they're trying to create like the next generation because you know that they're from newspapers. They do... Right. Calvin and Hobbes and Garfield, but they also do Beetle Bailey and they do like Blondie and Dick Tracy. Yeah, are that's. Those like, I mean, are the creators behind those cartoons like still making new cartoons? Depends. Or are they just like old syndicated? It depends um, because Peanuts, of course, no, uh, and Calvin and Hobbes, no. Those are just like classic. They just do reruns. But Garfield yeah. is still current, and Family Circus is still being made. Wait, is Jim Davis still writing Garfield comics? Or kind of. Do you believe... think it's like an intern who like has to come up with? Oh, uh, it's it's these worse. Strips? It's a committee. Is it? It's like a a table of people sit around and plan out Garfield strips. Wait, I can't tell if you're like being serious right now. I am. Wait, how do you know this? That's a good question. I guess I don't. I mean, I grew up. Um, reading Garfield, like mm -hmm. when I was like a small immigrant trying to learn English. So I was just, like, I read a bunch of Garfield comics, but nowadays it's kind of like a joke on the internet. Mm -hmm. I found out today that I follow Brandon on Twitter. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, he's Necrosofty. Yeah. His Brandon company is Necrosoft? Mm hmm. Necrosoft Games. And have they made games, I presume? Um, he made this game called Oh Dear for PS Vita, I think. And it, it was like the last game that they ever released because they stopped making PS Vita games. Um, I think that's a pretty cool accomplishment. Okay. I'm guessing that PS Vita is a PlayStation handheld? Yeah. Okay. I've never heard of it. Okay. That's probably why it failed. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I would also say that I'm the wrong person to say that about because I'm not much of a gamer. Okay. Yeah, me neither. But for some reason, I worked at a mobile game studio when I was in Korea. Mm -hmm. And I was just basically like translating RPG games all day long. And it was like, it was kind of fun at first, but it just became like soul crushingly boring and dull after a while. Like there were some few, uh, some fun games. Like there's this one called like Kung Fu Pets, where you train a pet to become a Kung Fu master. We could like write dialogue for that, and that was kind of fun. But most of the time, I was just kind of like bored and drawing comics at my desk. Mm -hmm. What company was it, if you don't mind me asking? It's a Korean company called Come to Us. Oh, and... Tato Lu. I don't actually know if that's how you say his name. Tato. He's a comic artist for Tabastic. He ended up making a comic series for them. Oh, is it the golf one or Summoner's War? Summoner's War. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's actually how I came to know about Tabastic. Just because like our company was like, um, they were making these Summoner's War comics. And like, that makes sense. Like, that's fine. But they also, for some reason, 
like reached out to somebody to make a comic about this game about golf. <laughs> and it's like, it was just the most bizarre thing. Like it's about a journey of this young pro golfer who like wants to find his dad. And then he like finds his dad through golf. I'm imagining this in the style of, do you know, Kutbu? Kutbu? Kutbu, yeah. That's, uh, I'm imagining oh a golf God. comic in the style of, of Kutbu. No, but like, okay, I want to talk about Kutbu more. Me but, too. <laughs> um, that comic, actually, like, the art was like very good. It was just that it was such like a weird and awkward plot line. Yes. But I should go back and read it. Like, it was, yeah, pretty weird. Nothing about a comic about a game, a golf video game. Well, like, yeah. I'm sure the comic was about real golf. But, like, if you uh -huh. said, like, hey, would you read this webcomic? It's about golf, but it's based on a video game. Yeah, it's just bizarre. Like, I just remember this one line where it was, like, uh, his, I think it was, like, his secret dad. He, like, watches him play. And then, he, of course, he's, like, a natural. He's, like, amazing at golf. And then his dad's, like, he is loved by the wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty uh, cool line. But anyway, yeah, Katbu, I love so much yeah and uh, I actually like asked the line editors when I went to go visit them I was like who is Cutbu? like can you tell me and they're like I don't know if we're allowed to say because it's just like so mysterious I uh I went to a um a movie in Korea and I remember that one of the commercials before the movie was obviously yes. a cut boo yeah. And, yeah yeah and like they have ads on the subway yeah like, cut boo drawing ads for this like chiropractor that's like, insane acupuncture. yeah Kutbu I is mean, I, it's half insane but half like just a fifth like a really angry fifth grader like mm -hmm. scribbling like what if what if a head came out of somebody's <laughs> ass yeah and then it like it's, it farted it's like so crazy but it's also like so genius too it, it has made me laugh out loud plenty of times yeah yeah, there I was Kutbu never stops making comics. If if Kutbu speaks English, I I want. I'm assuming it's a man. Okay. Uh, but if if he does, and I would love to have him on the show. That would be a victory. I heard rumors that Kutbu is a woman. Okay. Yeah. I, like yeah. I said, it it could, there's no reason to believe that Kutbu is male. Yeah. That would be that would be. Uh, yes. I would listen to that episode so hard. This is my goal. All right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your comics. Okay. So we, we got off track. So uh, you mentioned, um, remind me again, the one that ends in .biz. Hotcomics.biz? Yeah. It's Hot Comics for Cool People. That's the full name, yeah. And the website is hotcomics.biz. Mm -hmm. B-I-Z. Yeah. Uh, as per usual, and, mm -hmm. and then the comics that you drew for Brandon were called no girlfriend comics. No girlfriend. Yeah. Well, yeah, at this point in the show, I usually ask people to explain the name of their comic if the name requires explanation. So mm -hmm. I know that as per usual means, you know, that's just how it goes. That this is regular. Right. But why did you yeah. choose that name? Um, I actually started drawing as per usual for my college newspaper. Um, and my roommate at the time she was always saying things like, oh, like, my life sucks, as per usual. <laughs> like, we went to UC San Diego, which is, like, the most boring school on earth. And I guess it was, like, a good thing that I went there just because, like, that's how I got started in comics. And actually, uh, Reza, who draws Poorly Drawn Lines mm -hmm. and Trash Bird, we used to draw for the UCSD, like, newspaper together. And that's how I, like, met him and, like, He's been, like, really awesome about, like, like he's actually the one who, like, got me um, started with Webtoon. Yeah, I, I owe him, like, a lot. <laughs> we have him to thank for you. Yeah, basically. Can, so we got, we talked about your name a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about the look of your comic. So okay. if you were, if someone said, hey, I've never seen your comics, what do they look like? I've heard it being described as being really similar to like the Scott Pilgrim series, which I don't know if that's like a good or bad thing because I feel like I'm kind of just like ripping off of his art, but it like, it, 
I didn't mean for it to like look like that. It's just like the only way I know how to draw. Well, okay, let's let's forget that for the moment. Um, okay. So there's big eyes. What else? Um, I honestly there, there is a main so, character, right? For as per usual, yeah. Okay. Supposed to be myself, <laughs> or like, um, looks wise, it's like what I want to look like. <laughs> Okay. Just like the double buns and like the egg shirt. Um, I wanted to ask about the actually, egg shirt. Yeah, I don't actually own that egg sweater, but I would like to. Yeah. And um, I think eggs, they look great. They taste great. They're the perfect food. You can make any kind of eggs you want with them. Yeah. It's so versatile. So that's a plug for eggs. From, yeah. From Dami. Plugging eggs. Eggs.com. Eggs.biz. to me um i i guess i i really thought of your comics as being black and white primarily but they're they're not anymore did you start doing black and white or grayscale yeah i started out doing black and white just because i'm really bad with colors like that's the only reason like if i wanted to like lie and say um why like i like black and white is because like it kind of reminds me of like manga um like i grew up reading like a lot of mostly just pokemon comics Mm -hmm. um yeah so i kind of like that it emulates that style a little bit uh what's your favorite pokemon i think growing up it was raichu (laughs) okay but now as an adult you have a different one i like psyduck i can relate to psyduck a lot you know what i just realized that okay so in your there was a comic you did where you were in the last panel you were like at a bar drinking and you're sitting next to psyduck Right. I had no idea why there was, it looked like a platypus. I was like, I don't get this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just assumed it was a reference to something, but now I see that was Psyduck. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So how do you relate to Psyduck? I mean, don't you feel like Psyduck would be like a really good drinking buddy just because like you can both like complain about your lives together? Can Psyduck speak? No, he can say his name like over and over again, but like you would know what he's saying, like by the tone of his voice. Psyduck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad we managed to talk about Pokemon for a second there. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad that we got that in there. Well, when you said that you read uh, manga, there's definitely a manga influence um, in that, like you in the black and white comics, there's definitely like um, dots, you know, for yeah, um, like a texture. Tones. What's it called? Mm-hmm. Green tones. Yes. Yeah, I, I really like the look of screen tones, and um, I use this program called Manga Studio okay. to draw all my comics. Um, I think it's like way better than Photoshop, just because like it creates like way better lines. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> agree or disagree, uh, but uh-huh. yeah, I mean Photoshop was not made to draw in. Manga Studio was basically like, what if we took Photoshop and then just made it for drawing? Yeah, so Ma- awesome. Manga Studio had that advantage as being designed as for drawing, whereas Photoshop was just kind of a thing which everybody turned into a drawing program. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about um, how jokes are written. That's really, at the moment, what the podcast is about. Mm-hmm. So the way I like to do this is that we talk about the last comic you made first, and then we're going to talk about your next comic, the one that you haven't started on. So what was the last comic that you published or the last comic that you drew? And if you can like kind of, if you can tell me, tell me like it, it's a joke, that would be great. Tell it to you as a joke? If you can, not all jokes translate. I feel like that's kind of like why I'm a comic artist. Like just because I, I don't think I'm that funny like in real life. I think I'm much better online. But I am working on this comic right now that's... The time, like, I I taught English in Korea, and I learned, like, all these Korean drinking games. Mm -hmm. And um, the joke is that, like, first I list, like, two Korean drinking games. Like, one's called Titanic. Have you heard of it? Um, I may have even played it, but uh, I don't remember. It's actually, like, one of my favorites. Like, you take a glass of beer, and then you put, like, a shot glass. You float a shot glass in it. And then you pour like a little bit. Everyone takes turns like pouring a little bit of soju into it. Mm -hmm. And then the person who like sinks Ah, the shot has to drink the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one Korean drinking game. And then there's one that my friends made up, which is you just roll 
a, a die. And then if you land on a number between one and six, everyone has to drink. And the joke is that nobody wins this game. Aren't all of, oh, between one and six, so only two, three, four, and five? No, no, no. Like if you get any number between one and six, everyone drinks. So really just everyone drinks. Yeah, so that's the whole game. That's not a game. That's, that's, <laughs> a, joke. that's a joke. It's a joke. It's not a game. Uh, do you know the yeah. one where you take the, the soju, uh, the, the cap and off, you twist, off. You twist yeah, it and yeah. flick it? That's actually the other one that I'm drawing. Okay. There's, um, there's one called like Baskin Robbins 31. Yeah, yeah. I was going to draw that one, but I didn't want to get sued. Do you think that you would? No, probably not. No, it's like, not. Best case scenario, they would like hit me up and be like, hey, draw more comics about this for us. Yeah. That would be the best. I mean, yeah. Baskin Robbins and Korea are like best friends. I think Baskin Robbins and Korea is like so superior to like the ones here. Like, yeah. They, they have different cakes, like the stuff like animal faces and like the Avengers and whatnot. Anything you want. And, and you're going to eat like 12 Baskin Robin cakes a year for sure. I know. It's like always someone's birthday. But is, this is the, what's the last comic that you did put up on the internet? Let me try to, can I look it up? I guess so. But here's, do me a favor. Look it up to remind yourself. You can look at it, but then mm -hmm. I want you to close it before you tell it to me. Cause I want to, I want it oh. to be coming from your memory. Okay. Not, not your eyes. All right. So this, uh, the last one I posted on Instagram mm -hmm. was a hot comic. Okay. It's called BST, a guide to dad, uh, dad standard time. What is and dad standard, dad standard time? Dad standard time is like, um, when your dad makes you go to the airport three hours before your flight, because he doesn't want you to miss it. If this is Instagram, okay. then there's probably about four panels, right? Right. Okay. So start with the first panel. Yeah. So the first panel is a dad like forcing his daughter to the to go to the airport, and she's like dressed in her pajamas and like she's got like a toothbrush in her mouth, and he's like, "Hurry up, or we'll be late!" And she's like, "Gah." Which okay. is like not awake yet. Mm -hmm. And then the second panel, like a kid asking his dad, he's like, hey, dad, like, have you done those chores yet? And the dad's like watching sports and he's like, ah, but sports. And the time that it takes to do chores is like, you, you need to factor in like two more hours because of sports. So is the idea that dad standard time is, is not really in sync with the average human being? Right. Yeah. So dad's standard time is always in flux depending on what dad is doing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it could be a long time if you don't want it to be, or it could be a short time if you don't want it to be. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that one was actually based off of a tweet that I sent. Um, it was based off of my real life dad who actually like forced me to go to the airport like three hours early. And then Brandon saw the tweet and he's like, I'm going to turn this to, into a comic. And so he actually wrote that. Okay. But it's like not the first time that he and my dad have collaborated on a comic. <laughs> what was the other time? The other one is based on a joke that my dad told. Um, so I like wanted to go on this trip somewhere and my dad was like not having it. He's like super overproductive and he's like, oh my God, like you can't go. Like I know so many people who have died there. And I was like, who? Like name, name anyone. And he was like, Mr. Park, Mr. Kim. Mr. Lee, there's like all these like Koreans who like died. Uh, I think that one probably didn't do that well, if I remember correctly. When you, when you say <laughs> Mr. Park, Mr. Kim, and Mr. Lee, you've just named half of yeah. Korea. Yeah. What, well, when you say there, what was the dangerous place? I don't want to say it just because like, it, I don't want to say. Oh, it's the Philippines, it's isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoops uh, okay no i don't okay well we talked about dad's standard time which is mm -hmm. basically that father's definition of time is always inconvenient would that be fair mm -hmm. okay right so do you know what your next comic is going to be i was thinking about doing one about like my hair because i'm pretty spontaneous like with my hair and i wanted to make a reference to america's next top model Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen the show. I haven't. Okay. Well, in every 
season, they do like a makeover episode where they take these like aspiring models to salons and they're like, we're going to like fuck up your hair. Well, they don't say that. They're like, we're going to bleach your hair. We're like, we're going to like shave your head. And then every time like somebody cries. And then I just want to like make a comic about like how I don't understand that because like it's just hair, like hair grows back. Yeah, totally. But I also um, am kind of like hesitant to do that one for Webtoon because I feel like no one's going to get the reference. Like no one, none of the readers, I think like would watch America's Next Top Model. Yeah. You know, what's weird is that um, I feel like this reminds me of a conversation that Jeremy Kay and I had about the Webtoon audiences. A lot of Mm -hmm. the artists there, with the exception of like Shen and Megan, they Mm -hmm. end up like not like rethinking jokes because they just don't know what the Webtoon people like. Mm-hmm. like Jeremy and I went through the same phase of like starting there and then our stuff wasn't very popular so we we started trying to figure out what they would like and that didn't work and so we all mm-hmm. we just eventually gave up uh-huh. once you give That's up very tricky you'll be much happier <laughs> also your yeah. comics are super popular aren't they I don't yeah it's like surprising I don't I don't know <laughs> well they're they're the uh, average comic gets about a thousand likes am I wrong yeah yeah, so you, you, um, what do you got to worry about? I'm worried about them turning on me. Hmm. <laughs> There's so many of them. Well, hey, they're not Go Comics. Yeah, it's true. No, think I of it this know. way. If yeah. you're afraid that it's a reference they won't get, then don't think of it as a reference. Think of it as a teaching moment. That's you're, true. You're That's educating so them about yeah. something. Yeah, and like I do want to kind of be like this cool like older sister. <laughs> Perfect. But then I say that, like, and it's bad because, like, my next comic is going to be about, like, Korean drinking games. And I, that was one that I, like, um, was kind of hesitant to do, too. And, like, I'm actually not even sure, like, what the editors are going to say. Like, they might even just be like, hey, we can't post this. Well, BuzzFeed is, all, like, I think it's Adam Ellis is always doing, like, um, these weed jokes or, <laughs> like, well, there's, like, bongs and red eyes. And I'm like, whoa, I feel like that is misreading the audience a little bit like, no well buzzfeed is kind of just like anything goes um and that's what i love about them it's like they're pretty um free with like experimenting like um they give you a lot of freedom to just like do whatever you want and like if something doesn't work it doesn't work but um it's like always a surprise like what does really well that's funny because i kind of sus- suspected that buzzfeed comics were written by committee like the the fact no. that the same sort of joke keeps happening again and again and again, it seems like there's a bit of a formula there. I think it's definitely like when I was working there, I had to think about like, oh, like what's going to be relatable to like everyone, and it's like these are these aren't really like jokes that I would be making like if I weren't making these comics for BuzzFeed, um, but like it's definitely like there is a formula and if you like stick to like like the easy like relatable stuff like that stuff does really well but yeah it's um all the artists like they make their own comics like it's not like a committee thank god but do you know what i mean where there's like a whole bunch of comics where it's like this or that or before and after or expectation and results or it seems like they're like okay here's what we do two panel comics where i think Uh it's gonna be like this but it's like this yeah or I wish it were like this, but really it's like this. Or I think yeah. I'm like this, but it's like this. I'm definitely guilty of having done some of those comics. Um, I don't want to, it's, it's like hard to say because it's like you want to like balance like making like stuff you like and also like stuff that's going to be popular on the internet. So That is hard. the balance, I think. That is the exact balance of our job is mm-hmm. making what you want to make and making mm-hmm. what people want to see. Mm-hmm. And if you're lucky, I'm going to put you in this category. People like you and Shen, the things that you want to make are the things people like to see. I actually, like, I don't even know even still if what I'm making is, like, something that I actually, like, want to make for myself. It's hard. Well, I had an idea. Since you seem to worry about comics not succeeding or comics failing, have mm-hmm. you had a big flop? What's your biggest oh, yeah. flop? All the time. Definitely like my earlier stuff, like nobody was reading that. And um, no, no, no. We have to talk about once people started reading you, what was one comic that just did not connect with the readers? Can I look back and see? Yes. For this, you can. 
Okay. Okay. And while you look, we'll talk about things not related to comics. Do you like K-pop? Uh, it's okay. It's not, I don't really listen to it. That you much. did. You did a strip. Re- uh, I don't know if it was recently, but you did like. Yeah, that it, was yeah. The punchline was, was mochi. Yeah, it was like somebody at work like asked me to make a comic about K-pop. Because I know you're a big fan of uh, of of '90s R and B. Oh yeah, that's in all my bios. Yeah. So um, so who do you like from the '90s R and B? Like Whitney Houston or like <laughs> Boys to Men? Yeah, Whitney Houston, Boys to Men, KCI JoJo. <laughs> I would like to hear a joke which flopped because flops are are funny. Yeah. yeah. I've had so many flops. Yeah, me too. And there, there are flops which you're kind of like, okay, I get it, why that didn't work. And then there are flops where you're like, hey, I personally loved this joke. And if you guys didn't like it, well then, fuck you. Can I talk about a comic that I like never posted just because I know it's going to flop? Of course. Yes, let's talk about yeah. that. Well, let's do that. So what comic did you never post because you know it will flop? <laughs> uh, so we did this thing one day called... BRL, it's like BuzzFeed Request Live. Mm-hmm. And I asked for people to send me like comic prompts. Um, and then someone was like, make a comic about Panic at the Disco. And then I tried. Because like I don't I don't listen to them. Like I don't know anything about them except for the fact that like that one guy wears eyeliner and he really likes suspenders. So the comic was like, why Panic at the Disco broke up in 2009? And then the comic was just basically like them having a dispute because like one of them stole the other guy's suspenders. And it's like a super like weak joke. And like, I'm surprised you didn't do a joke about just going to the club and like wanting to get the hell out of there. Like somebody panicking at a disco. That's pretty good. Hmm. Maybe that, I'll redo it. I don't know. <laughs> that seems like, like, I can imagine so many cartoonists I know doing that. Like, I hate going to clubs. And then they, like, the person mm-hmm. freaks out and, like, they just go home and read or something, watch Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Panic at the Disco. That's the name of the strip. That's really good. <sighs> what, how about you said you have other ideas that were like this? Give me another one. Well, there's, there's some comics that I've posted that I just, like, don't even put my name on just because I'm so ashamed of it. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's definitely talk about one of those. I'll just like release it into the wild and like not how like just on I'm I mean, imager it's mostly, uh, yeah or like like twitter mostly well that's like attributed to me anyway but. yeah oh my gosh I just found another comic thing that I did but um this series called um illustrated text posts um if you go to illustrated text posts dot tumblr dot com mm-hmm. it is a bunch of comics where I've taken like really popular text posts from Tumblr and turned them into the comics. I think I saw a couple of those today uh, on your Tumblr. Yeah. I know you said that there's a a separate Tumblr for it, but I'm pretty sure I saw one on your Tumblr. Yeah. I'll like reblog it to my own. Okay. That really helps me because I'm so bad at like writing jokes or like coming up with ideas. When you have an idea, when you know that you've just like, ooh, that's a good idea, do you write yeah. it down or do you put it into your phone? What do you do? Yeah, I'll like write it down in my notes app. Okay, in your notes app. Um, a bunch of nonsense. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, and so like how many ideas do you think you have in the... Like usable ideas? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just how many entries? Like 20 or so. Okay. But it's... It's really just like really, really bad. So when is the next time you have to make a comic? Um, like tonight. <laughs> All right. This is wonderful. Yeah. So later today, yeah. at some point in time, do you know what you're, what comic you're going to do today? So oh, today I have to finish up a webtoon. Mm-hmm. I'm almost done. And then I have to get started on the next hot comic. Okay. And those are ones that I, I don't write. Like Brandon writes those and I draw them. So that's actually like one of my fears is that like people think that like I'll write these like like really good comics but it's like actually him hmm. <laughs> and like i don't want to take the credit for it because like, he's like actually like one of the funniest people that i know but he is he's purely a writer mm-hmm. so he's working on like um a couple of different comics with other artists too okay like, well, where he'll write it and like they'll draw it um what's the like later today you're gonna sit down and you're gonna finish one for webtoon and then 
the other one has already been written for you. So what I'm looking for is the next time you have to sit down and draw one that you wrote. When when is that? That's probably going to be like later in the week, like Tuesday or something. Okay. So when that happens, are you going to get out your notes app and like try to find the idea that you're going to do? Um, I'll like sit down and I'll like scroll through my notes app, but Mm -hmm. there's not going to be anything that I can use. Um, so what do you do then? I'll just kind of like stare at my screen until something happens or I'll like go through my Tumblr archive and, um, try to redo the ones like from when I was like first making comics. Cause I think like the ideas that I had back then were like, like pretty good. And it was just that like the art wasn't there. It was literally just like pencil sketches or like drawn with a ballpoint pen and like sketch or scanned in. Mm-hmm. So I want to go back and like, um, like redo some of my old stuff or like the one I can't even remember the name of the the one that I wrote in when I was like seven. Aliens don't need to be on Earth. Maybe I'll redo that one. <laughs> or like sometimes I'll go through uh, my tweets and try to make a comic out of that. Sorry, I was just thinking that when Naver said, hey, have you ever thought of doing something with a storyline? You're like, well, actually, and you just slide aliens. (laughs) Check out this bad boy. Is it aliens don't belong on Earth? Aliens don't need to be on Earth. Aliens don't need to be on Earth. and just to be here. (laughs) Just slide it across the table and they're like, oh, we see. Very good. (laughs) We -hmm. we would like to buy this for one million won. (laughs) Yeah, that's a pretty sweet deal. I wonder if anybody will get that joke. Um, yeah, I'd say go on my Tumblr and see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I mean the one million won joke. Oh, actually, I just got that. Okay. <laughs> Slipped one by you. One of the things I like to do is uh, to ask you what comics you like to read so you can plug some of your friends. Okay. Um, definitely, like, the people that I worked with at BuzzFeed, um, Karina Farrick, mm-hmm. she... She draws like amazing comics. She's an amazing animator. Um, Hajin Park. She was like the, there were three web artist fellows. And um, so it was like me, Karina and Hajin. Mm-hmm. Um, their Twitter handles are, um, it's at Hajin Duck. Okay. And Karina's is at Dilfasaur. Is that with a PH? Uh, no, it's like B-I-L-F-O-S-A-U-R. Oh, Dilfasaur? Like Dilf, but like Dilfasaur. With an F? Yeah. dilf a Yeah. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. I think it's like Dilf mashed with like a dinosaur. Is, is a Dilf like a MILF, but it's a dude? Yeah. You've never heard of Dilf? No. Yeah. And would a dilf be like an old dude that you want to sleep with? I don't know. <laughs> I think we're like reading too much into this. Well, if I get her on the show, th- that's Karina, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to have her. So if I do, I'll, I'll ask her about Dilphosaur. Okay, cool. And Hajin Duck. Mm-hmm. I saw Hagen... her stuff recently and I was thinking it looked like the Hungry Caterpillar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, her style is like very unique and like it's beautiful editorial illustrations and stuff. It looks, well, just this one comic that I'm thinking of. It looked very much like a children's storybook and yeah, The Hungry Caterpillar specifically. So I, I was wondering if it was even digital or like how it was created because it has sort oh, of... Oh yeah, she, she does them all by hand. Okay. But like paint or colored pencils, do you know? Like water watercolors, I think. Okay. Yeah, because there's a lot of texture. And you said the three of you were webcomic fellows? We're web artist fellows. Is BuzzFeed like a university? Um, I think that's what... They were like trying to do, um, it's basically kind of like an internship. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, we were working on this team called BFF, where we basically made memes for the internet. Yes. It was really, really good times. (laughs) That's sort of where that is. It it was like this, but it's like this. That's where it's very Mm -hmm. mimetic, if you will. Mm -hmm. How about Lauren Brands? She works there? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's at BuzzFeed, too. Is she a fellow, or did, is she somebody no, else? No, she, she's like an illustrator there, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm eager to have more people from BuzzFeed on the show, because uh, I, I'm happy to see all of these places paying people, like hiring them and oh, yeah. 
paying them to create content because it's just as easy to not. And we need to yeah. change that. Right. Dami Lee, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thanks for having me. I want you to have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. One more time, thank you, Dami, for talking to me. The next episode of the Pod Comics webcast will feature Sarah C. Anderson, who makes Sarah Scribbles. I recommend reading a whole bunch of her comics, uh, which can be found at sarahcanderson.com. Now, if you're too old-fashioned for the internet, Sarah actually has a book out from Andrews McMeal called uh, Adulting is a Myth, and I believe it's available at amazon.com. So, until next time, gang, adios. Adios.